Hey guys and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and I thought today we would just peek in on some of the many aquariums that I've been doing rehabs on in the recent few months just to give you guys an update on how things are going. Now this is my 75 gallon Neolamprologus multifasciatus aquarium that I redid this island section on the other day and I was really curious to see how the Shelleys would react and I have ordered some shells to try some replacements in this aquarium but they haven't come yet so I'll make sure I update you guys on that when the time comes but so far nobody seems particularly uh, perturbed by me changing up their scape um, it seems as though they've just managed to colonize the entire section that I opened up. So that's exactly what I had hoped would happen. Um, I'm hoping as well that they will start excavating some of the sand in here. But you can see that the fish seem really not at all disturbed. And the tank is cleared up beautifully. It was actually super clear later that afternoon. Um, but the fish look amazing. And so far so good and I will uh, make a video when I get the new shells telling you what I've chosen and showing you if they like them or not now the biggest obstacle is going to be actually removing the old shells without removing fry um, because these guys do breed all the time um, and again I just I don't like how these look anymore so it's the time has come um, let's take a look at the 55 gallon impulsive aquascape just above it. This tank has done insanely well. You can see how much growth I have, especially in this Sagittaria subulata. Um, it has really filled in and has gotten a little bit of height, which I wasn't, I'm not super thrilled about, but it, everything looks really good. The Hygrophila siamensis is going gangbusters and looks beautiful. All the crypts have stayed really healthy. The ferns look great. Um, I did add a couple of pleco caves over here for the long finned um, lemon blue eye ancestress I put in here. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of them, but I have been target feeding them, so I'm hoping we'll have fry sooner rather than later. Uh, I also sold 50 of the fish in this aquarium and it still looks full and that's because they are breeding me out of house and home. So everything's doing really, really, really well in this aquarium. In fact, um, at some point soon, I'm going to have to trim that, that hygrophila in the background there to make it a more, a more pleasing shape. But for now, I'm just letting it grow in. Now, if you guys watched yesterday's video, I showed how I added all these botanicals to the shrimp aquarium. And that was actually done almost a week ago. Um, this aquarium is due for a water change, but you can see that it has remained very clear because of the way I prepped those botanicals. And I'm really, really happy with it. Um, the shrimp love it. They graze on those botanicals constantly. And it's looking really good. If you guys want to try any of these, remember you have a month to order at Tannin to get 10% off with code Rachel10 at checkout. And I really hope that especially you shrimp keepers out there will give some of these botanicals a try. I really think it makes a big difference. On that note, let's take a look in the Wild Bee Aquarium. This is the 75 gallon Wild Bee Aquarium. And this is one that just really doesn't video well. It is really pretty in person. Um, and my favorite part is just how much the shrimp absolutely love, love, love grazing on all these surfaces. On almost every botanical we look at, you see a shrimp or two or three really just picking away at those surfaces. And it, it just makes me feel like I'm doing something right. Um, historically in this aquarium, it, it looks kind of empty um, because it's a 75 gallon that has shrimp in it. But since I've added all these botanicals, the shrimp are just so much more visible. And I'm really enjoying the change um, in this aquarium because there are literally just probably hundreds of these shrimp in this aquarium. And they are just loving, loving all these grazing surfaces. Um, even the Amano shrimp, 
that are in here are really enjoying the addition of these botanicals. Um, and again, this is an aquarium that I, I don't think reads that well on camera, but I find to be really, really attractive in person. And sometimes I find that with some of my tanks, the ones that look best on camera aren't necessarily my favorite in person. And that is certainly the case with this one. Look at these guys everywhere. And again, these are the wild bee shrimp, Caradina logmanii. Um, and they are one that you just never see in the hobby anymore. So it was especially important to me to really facilitate as much breeding as possible with these guys. So seeing them so happy uh, really makes me, me feel good. Let's go take a look at the cherry shrimp aquarium. Now, Pardon the glass on this one, but I have quite a few buried cherry shrimp in here and I like to leave the the growth on the glass there because it's easier to um, see how many babies I have because they, they tend to stick to that glass after hours. In this aquarium as well, you can just see that the cherry shrimp are really, really enjoying all the botanicals. Um, really grazing on all those surfaces. And this aquarium isn't the prettiest, um, but it's certainly a vast improvement over how it's looked for the past decade. And again, I'm, I'm super stoked that the water is staying nice and clear despite the addition of all these botanicals. And it's not that shrimp mind the tannins, um, but and in fact, with cherry shrimp in particular, it makes them much, much redder, but I like to keep clear water shrimp aquariums. Look at the red on that guy. Well, girl, actually. And I do think that cherry shrimp are some of the best beginner shrimp just because they've been around the longest and they're the most stable. Um, they really like those pods. There's a whole bunch on that, that pod there. Let's go take a look at the honeycomb cat redo. This is the 55 gallon aquarium full of Centromoglis um, perugia or the honeycomb wood cat that we put some potted plants in the other week um, and you can see that they have just exploded with growth now that they're in substrate and out of those pet store pots. Um, there's Rotala and more Hygrophila and then whatever that is in the back corner um, and the fish in here seem really really happy um, they're just so much fun to keep I, I can't tell you how much I enjoy sitting and watching these fish as they zoom all over the place in this aquarium and since I've added all this driftwood um, they've really become even more outgoing than they were and this is historically a fish that is extremely shy so it's been very very rewarding to see how outgoing they are um, now, right now, there's a pellet of food in there, which is why you see so many of them. But generally speaking, throughout the day, there's always a few that are very, very visible. You can see just how round some of these fish are getting. I'm really hoping that that means we're going to be seeing some breeding behavior soon because I'm super excited to share that with you guys. Um, and getting rid of the substrate in this aquarium has made it much easier to, to maintain. So I still have lots and lots of upgrades planned for various aquariums around the fish room. You guys know I want to redo the retirement community. Um, and actually it's supposed to get pretty warm this week. So if my, my water source outside is not frozen, I may try and get that sand rinsed uh, so that I can get started on that aquarium. But it might just have to wait till spring. Um, the plecos <laughs> in the blacktail killer tank spawned two more times, so I'm either going to have to just resign myself to the fact that I'm not going to be able to do that aquarium, or I'm going to have to risk some of the babies, or just be super careful. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you think I should just leave that tank be for now, or if I should go for it. Uh, and then I do want to get a guest aquascaper in for that last 20 long on top. Um, and soon this spring, once, once the weather breaks, um, I'm going to need to break down the 150 to move it. And it really makes me very sad, but at the same time, I'm kind of excited to restructure the fish room 
and do some really great things to help not only my production value, but just the viewing experience in here, as well as streamline the workload, because it is an awful lot maintaining all of this. Um, again, I have a few events coming up in the next uh, couple months. I have the Big Fish Deal, February 15th to 17th in Gaithersburg, Maryland. I'll be doing a live demo on how to build an Epistogramma breeding aquarium. Um, and that will be utilizing a bunch of the botanicals as well. And I'll also be moderating a speaker panel. Then March 30th to 31st, I believe, we have Aquashella in Dallas, Texas. Um, I will be lecturing at the North Jersey Aquarium Society in May. Uh, I believe it's the 18th, and I'll be giving two lectures at that club meeting. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for right now. I might be forgetting some, and I do keep all that stuff up to date on my events page on my website. Um, also on my website, I'm going to start blogging again. So if you've never checked it out, you may want to. I have, um, I'll be blogging under my news heading there. And I hope to just sort of give you some thoughts behind some of the aquariums that I'm building, uh, some of the fish that I'm keeping, and just some more unique content there. Now, I am disappointed to say that I still have not gotten my play button notification from YouTube, nor have I gotten the membership status. So as soon as those things happen, I will be sharing them with you. As always, thank you guys for your continued support. Make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell on because I have so many things planned for you and so many changes will be coming to the fish room this year.